Now, before we start, guys, I want to talk to you about a couple of things uh, that I've done and that are coming up. Uh, first thing is that I finished uh, my making of photo shoot with uh, Meg and Owen. It's done. I also have a photo shoot with Cynthia and I also have a photo shoot with Claudianne. They are done. They're on my channel. Also, stay tuned for my thorough review on the FZ2500 that is coming up very soon. I also have photo shoots coming up with Claudia and also Melissa, who is an aerial artist. So I just wanted to mention that, that and without further ado, let's go to the video. Hello YouTube guys, this is Jacques Gaines from The Moving Icon and I'm here to talk to you about a pole fitness uh, photo shoot I did with a girl named Judy Leclerc and um, uh, what it really is about today is being sexy and keeping the class. And um, uh, now let me explain what pole fitness is uh, right off the bat. Uh, pole fitness is a derivation of pole dancing. Now, because pole dance involves so much work and you have to be in really good shape to do it, uh, thus has derived the whole idea of pole fitness. So when Julie and I talked, we said, uh, let's put together a photo shoot and start taking pictures of her doing pole fitness. Uh, now, when that happens and I'm approached with something that I've never done before, what I'd like to do is go to Instagram, do a search and see what uh, is out there already. So I Instagram searched uh, pole fitness and pole dance and poof, all these results popped up. I saw a lot of tacky shots, a lot of shots that were really, you know, sort of playboy, sort of penthouse type look to them. And I wanted to get away from that and go to the sculpture aspect of pole fitness. Now, the thing is, is that no matter how much you try, uh, remember that sexiness within itself is beautiful. Nature has well designed the female body to attract the opposite sex. What I, the real challenge I had was to combine that sexiness and bring the beauty out of it without being too disrespectful and coming up with something that was, had a bit of class to it and was sharp. So as for the photo shoot, uh, uh, I think a lot of things went well. I talked to Julie about the fact that I wanted to bring that respectable aspect to it. Uh, we came up with some clothing and some outfits that were really cool that sort of demonstrated that without getting too sexy. We brought that in with a two-piece suit and with also a costume that she uses to present her shows that she had just gotten made. She was all, all really excited about it. Julie uh, decided to bring a gang over because we could only, because of our schedules, we could only organize this on a Friday night. Uh, Friday night equals beginning of the weekend. So she invited a couple of friends over and that was really cool. And what happened was during the photo shoot, we had a lot of fun. They were really cool people. They were uh, very open-minded and uh, very caring and nice and wanted to take care of me. Now, what I did learn was Whatever shoot you're doing and for whatever reason, you gotta take the time to do some social activity during the shoot. Uh, be it at the beginning, uh, maybe in the middle, when you take a little break and near the end, it's always important uh, to do some social activity. We did some, but I could have done a bit more because I ended up uh, thinking about the photo shoot later on and about the people that I met and I realized, boy, these, these people are really cool and it would have been good to know them even more. Another thing is because Julie had friends, the friends also saw Julie taking pictures. They said, do you mind taking pictures? Here we go back again. I'm not learning my lesson, Jacques. I said, okay, well, we can take a couple more pictures. But remember that each time you bring a new subject, you have different lighting, different exposure. Uh, you have to replace your flashes, bring them to certain spots and readjust. And that in itself is a lot of work. So I ended up uh, taking pictures of three people instead of one. And I had spoken about this in another photo shoot that it was not a good idea to take too many people in your photo shoot. So I just wanted to mention that I'm trying to learn, I'm getting better at this. And I think I'm each time when someone asks me, well, can I get a couple of shots of my friend? I'm, you know, categorically now I'm gonna say no. Another lesson I learned and what's really great is that Julie was a great subject. And I know I talk about this a lot, but I, you know, I really like the importance of attitude when you're working with a subject is 
super, super important. And Julie was a trooper. She tried stuff out. She said, do you need this type of shot? She was really cool about it. I showed her the pictures that we were doing and then she'd go and adjust and it was a lot of fun. So the importance of that to me, I got to underline it in every single video I do because it's just great to work with someone that is open-minded, will try stuff, and will not freak out when the pictures aren't necessarily to their liking afterward as well. Another lesson I learned is I'm start, I'm going to probably start moving away from TFP. TFP is trade for print, uh, which means you basically do these uh, photo shoots. Uh, you, you get the subject's image, you, you ask them to be a model for you, which is the favor they give to you, and you give them prints and photos so they can use for Instagram, Facebook, or whatever portfolio thing they wanna do. Now I'm gonna start moving away from that, and here's the reason why. When you do trade for print, there's an obligation to deliver photos pretty quick. The subjects leave the photo shoot, they're very excited about the fact that they just got really professional pictures taken, so they wanna see the photos fast. And um, that's a good thing, and I understand the fact that they wanna see their photos, but what happens is that I also have a day job and I'm doing a lot of stuff uh, uh, on the side as well, so it's kinda tough to get that delivery uh, you know, within a week or two weeks done. And I like to give myself the time to actually re reflect on what I did in this photo shoot. So I'm gonna start moving away from Trade for Print. One, because I have enough portfolio already. Secondly, because when you pay for the model to come in, you don't have that obligation to give them photos. And you can take those photos, do what you want with them, they're yours, and you have no obligation. Another lesson I learned is that uh, retouching a full body is a bit different from retouching a face. Now, I've been working and following different retouchers on YouTube, learning how to retouch. It is an art within itself. It is absolutely stunning what you can do when you retouch a photo. You can bring a photo from here and just bring it all the way up to there. Now, I've been practicing a lot with portraits and just the face. It's a bit different when you're doing a full body retouch. It doubles, triples, and quadruples the time it takes to do your retouch. So it's just something to take into consideration when you're taking full body shots of a full body. Retouching will take a lot longer. Now, a couple of other things I wanna talk about is some of the new equipment that I bought recently that I really love. There's the Godox, Godox SK300 right here. They are small, cheap flashes. And I just wanted to mention them because, listen, they're not of the best of quality, but I really like the fact I bought these in a kit of two and I use them with these, this remote uh, with the Godox and uh, the Godox remotes, uh, which is sort of, they have like a USB thing on them. And you know what? These things really do a good job. They're only 300 watts and I realized uh, through time that 300 watts is not enough, but it can help you to paint and complement this sucker right here. This is the X600 Lithium by Strobe Pro. They've recently changed their models. They've upgraded. Uh, by the way, just a great company. They're out of uh, Calgary, Alberta. They ser their service is excellent. Delivery is excellent. If any, and if ever anyone wants to get uh, some of their uh, flashes, it is worth your while. But what happens is the Godox uh, SK300s complement really well the Strobe Pro X600. So I normally use my Strobe Pro, Strobe Pro X600 as the main flash, and then the Godox come in and paint around, especially on a body shoot like this. I use this in combination with my stripped softboxes, which are here. These suckers right here, yep. There it is. That's one of the strip. This is a five eight, five foot strip softbox, and I also have a hair hair light. Um, I think it's a thirty six inch hair light uh, softbox, and I use those to paint and get the image that I want. Now I am really really set flash wise. I bought the Strobe Pro, and I am absolutely loving it. I'm having a lot of fun with these two new things, these Godox SK three hundreds. Uh, complementing my lithium uh, strobe pro x 600s and the new soft boxes they help a lot when you're doing full body shoots now i got a ton of questions for you guys and i need some interaction here uh this photo shoot was taken with the canon 6d which is uh eos uh 
uh, 5D Mark II technology. I don't know if you've checked some of my videos lately, but I am thinking about getting a new portrait camera, uh, which means for me, high megapixel count. And uh, now what I'm debating right now is going for a full frame with high megapixel count, like the uh, Canon EOS 5DS or the A7R. Now these are high megapixel count. I think they're up in 40 megapixel and up uh, megapixel count. I'm thinking of those cameras, but in pops in this Fuji medium format camera. What do you guys think? Should I go for the medium format or should I stick to the EOS 5D, 5DS or one of those cameras? That's the first question I have. Second question I have, uh, how do you guys use light modifiers? How do you use them when you're doing a full body shoot? Give me your input uh, of what you think my approach was, how it went from what you see from the images I'm gonna, uh, I'm showing you guys. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. So uh, stay in touch and keep on sending me those, those comments. Uh, they're more than welcome. So that's it guys, thanks a lot for watching. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for my high quality stuff. Check out Behance. If you like this video, don't forget to click the thumbs up at the bottom. If you wanna keep in cahoots with what I do, subscribe. And don't forget everybody, keep on making something from nothing.